This video is about to walk you through how to install OpenSense. Um, it's a beginner video, so if you've not installed OpenSense before, it'll be quite easy for you to do. It seemed like good timing with the changes that NetGate have made um, with respect to PFSense. Their home lab licenses have, well, at first they just knocked one on the head and killed them. Uh, then they changed it to $129 a year um, for home use. A lot of people have been complaining about that and said they'd like to move to OpenSense, so I figured I'd do a video on it. Um, as a side note, there is an offer on at the moment. I think you can get it 30% off, so it's like $99 a year or something. Um, I don't know if that's continuous, but if you've installed PFSense Plus uh, and you don't pay it, well, basically, you're not going to get any updates. So this video is going to walk you through how to use OpenSense. Um, if you have installed PFSense Plus, there's also an option of just reinstall the community edition of PFSense, um, restore, uh, make a backup before you do that. And then once you've reinstalled the community edition, just restore the backup. It's as simple as that. Uh, if you do want to move over to OpenSense, this video is for you. Uh, I'm Sam from Sheridan Computers. Well, let's get started. Sheridan Computers. IT. Communications. Support. So the first thing we're going to want to do, obviously, is to um, download OpenSense. So just whichever search I'm using, find that. Um, so the URL is opensense.org forward slash download. Let's go ahead and visit that page. Um, so we've got the options of which version we want to download. Um, the default's fine. So the architecture, there is only one version. Um, but then you've got an image type. So you've got DVD, VGA, serial, and nano. Um, so we're going to go with the default, which is the VGA one, because we're installing it on a device that has a VGA adapter in it. The other options you've got is serial. So if you're installing on a PC Engine's device, for example, which doesn't have a, a VGA output, then you'll be installed using the serial installer, so you can access the console via the serial port. And then there's a nano option. Um, which is a pre-installed image. Um, so if you need to burn it to a, um, it says a USB stick, SD card, CF card, so if it's compact flash, whatever, you'll be using the nano option, but we'll go ahead with the VGA version. Um, select a mirror closest to you. So we'll go with University of Kent, as I'm in the UK, and then hit download. Ha. Okay, that didn't work. Let's, um, manually find the mirror. Uh, United Kingdom, University of Kent. And as uh, I mentioned previously, we want the 23.7 VGA AMD 64.image.bz2. Um, BZ2 means it's archived, so once we've downloaded it, we'll need to um, extract the actual image file from the archive. So let's go ahead and download that. Okay, we've downloaded that. So... Um, let's go ahead and extract it. Um, if you're using Windows, I'm on Linux, so it'll just extract. But if you're using Windows, um, to extract a BZ2 file, you can use 7-zip. Let me go ahead and extract this real quick. Once the file's extracted, as you can see, the... Uh, Initial download is like 400 meg, but the um, actual extracted file is like 2 gig. So now I'm going to use um, Balana Etcher to burn this to a disk. Um, if you're using Windows, you can use the same program. Um, or you can use Rufus, for example. So I'm going to use uh, Balana Etcher. So um, Select your image file, select the target. In this case, I have a USB stick installed. We'll go ahead and flash the stick. Okay, with that, it looks like we're uh, finished and we're ready to proceed to uh, actually installing. So, for this, um, I'm actually going to be installing it on one of those um, devices from, zoom in, 
There we go. Uh, one of these devices from AliExpress. This is one of those uh, Tipton ones. Um, this one's um, it's got four USB on it. You get my face out of the way of it. Um, display port, HDMI, and SIM card. And it's got four network cards on the front um, and an auxiliary. And you've got your power, of course, and the lights. So I'm going to be installing it on one of these. Um, it's a test. Why not? So let me just get this um, set up real quick. Powered up. Okay, so the OpenSense installer has started. Um, it's a live image when you first boot off OpenSense, um, not an installer as such. Um, you get the option to run the importer in a second. Yep. So you can do press any key to start configuration importer. Um, the purpose of that is if you have a firewall that's died, you can literally boot off the a live image, which is the installer. Um, and if you have a backup of the config and you put it onto a second USB stick, then you can import the config and it'll just boot live until you have time to change the hardware. Um, obviously we don't, it's a fresh installation. So as I mentioned, it's uh, boots to a live environment. Um, so you can actually access OpenSense at this stage. Um, we want, don't want to do that. You've got two options here. You can log in as root with the password of um, OpenSense, or you can log in as installer with the password of OpenSense. If you log in as root, then obviously it'll just, you can access the system as is, the live system. Um, we want to install it onto a hard drive, so we're going to be logging in as installer. So one keyboard. Installer and open sense. Okay, so this is like a standard FreeBSD install. So choose your country for your keyboard layout. Uh, I don't want to test it, I just want to continue. Um, now you've got two options you can install it using UFS or ZFS. Um, generally recommend ZFS, there are use cases for UFS, but um, so we've only got one drive in here, so we're going to be doing Stripe. Um, the one that we want is this one here, which is a NVMe drive. Um, are you sure you want to destroy the contents? Um, there is nothing on it. Well, there is a previous OpenSense installation that came on the device. Um, so at this stage now, the system will go ahead and start installing OpenSense, so it's cloning the current system. So the uh, install has completed. So um, I've got various options. One of which is to change the root password. So uh, go ahead and change the root password. Um, just verify the password. So that's done. Now we can um, completely install and reboot. Um, in which case, we'll actually be booting off the installed version of OpenSense. So one thing about the live installer, um, the live environment, is just that. And any changes that you make won't persist. Um, you can import the config file, like I mentioned, but if you do any changes to it, you'll lose them as soon as you restart. So you do need to install it. Um, so anyway, we'll go ahead and completely install.
So we're going to try and obviously do some auto configuration at this stage. I haven't yet got a LAN, ca uh, WAN cable plugged in. I've just got the LAN one connected, so I know which port is which. Um, so now we can go ahead and log into the system on the LAN. Um, we just log into this real quick and uh, so this time I want to log in as root and whatever you set the password to. Uh, I'm just going to drop to a shell real quick. Where is it? Wait, same as pfSense. It's good. I do if config. Uh, IGC zero is not connected, and IGC three is active, which is fine. So exit. Oh, wrong keyboard again. Exit that. We'll go ahead and assign the interfaces. So I don't want to assign a lag. Um, don't need any VLANs for this example. So my uh, LAN is going to be, sorry, it wants a WAN, doesn't it? Which is IGC0. Um, and the LAN interface is going to be IGC3. So we're good with that. Let's go ahead and proceed. I was just doing that so that I could actually um, figure out which interface was plugged in. Uh, with that, we should be good to log in. Oh. So you'll get the, um, obviously the security warning, that's because it's a self-signed certificate. Um, something you can sign out, but obviously it's safe to ignore for the time being. And now we've got the OpenSense um, login screen. So we are up and running, but we need to configure it and go through the wizard. So I'll just go through that with you real quick. So we're gonna log in with root and whatever you set the password to. Um, so at this stage, it's going to start the initial setup wizard. So you can click, you can exit the wizard if you'd rather manually do it. Um, for showing people ease of use, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. So set your host name, um, whatever domain you want. Uh, obviously your English uh, language. Um, go ahead and set the primary DNS servers. I'm just going to use quad nine for this. Um, I can use Google, um, which is 8888. Um, I'm going to untick override DNS. So um, that basically will allow the you want to sign DNS settings. Um, we don't want to do that in this case. Um, whether you do or not, it depends on your connection. Enable resolver um, basically enables OpenSense as a DNS resolver. And then you've got additional options such as enabling DNS sec support. And um, hardening, we'll just go next from here. And go ahead and set your time zone. So, where am I? In the UK, so Europe, London. Um, this is to configure your WAN interface. So I'm gonna leave mine set to DHCP because that's just how my network's configured. Um, you can set this yourself, so static, DHCP, PBVOE, etc. Um, if you need to set MTU and MSS, um, your static configuration it will be editable if you've set it to static. Um, BPPOE configuration and the other configuration options are here. I'm just going to leave these. Um, one thing I do want, I'm just going to unblock these. You'll probably want to leave them, um, you'll probably want them ticked, but I'm just unticking them because my one IP address will be a local IP address. Um, configure your LAN interface. I'm just going to leave this on the defaults, 192.168.1.1 with a 24 subnet mask. Um, it's probably a good idea to change this because that's one of the most popular uh, IP ranges used by uh, private networks and things, so you probably want to change that. Um, root password, 
if you want to put a new one in or um, just leave it blank if you want to keep the current one. Then click reload to apply the changes. So that's just basically confirming the setup that we've done. Um, now at this stage, it says, congratulations, OpenSense is now configured. Um, consider donating to the project over to our website. So if you want to donate, the link's there. Um, you can continue to the dashboard or check for updates. Checking for updates is um, probably wise. So there's no updates available in this case. Um, I'm going to leave that there. Head over to the dashboard. Um, so you've got various settings, obviously you can overview from the dashboard. The uh, interface is a little different than um, PFSense. It's personal preference, whether you prefer it or not to the PFSense interface. Um, like I said, I'm going to leave this video there. This was literally just a, a quick video on how to install OpenSense, just for those that have not done it before, because the install is a bit different. We're booting from a live image. Um, I do have a lot more videos planned on OpenSense um, and PFSense as it happens. Um, if you did find this video useful, please um, consider liking the video and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. You hit notifications if you'd like to receive notifications of any videos that we do. Um, any comments, suggestions, um, types of videos that you'd like to see, please feel free to leave them below in the comments.